I love being a businesswoman in a brand. The important thing when building your brand is to focus on exactly what you want to show the public. I'm definitely the OG of building brands. In this town, you have to be unique to stand out. There are so many copycats. But always remember, they can copy your past, but they can't copy your future. My name's May. I run Ozcult, which is a handmade lingerie brand. It's like a celebration of divine femininity. <laughs> My name is Remy Fox. When I come to Hollywood, I come to party, make headlines, suck some dick, make some money. <laughs> I wanted to make money through my art, and I didn't want to lead a life where I was constantly depending on men, especially because most of them were pretty creepy. Insta-famous. I hate that word. I'll, like, joke about it. I'll be like, yeah, I'm famous on the internet. <laughs> Without my followers, I probably would be, like, a typical Latina working at Western Dental, eating my hot Cheetos with my ghetto nails. <laughs> I don't know. It's not real. Like, it's all kind of, like, a mirage of reality. I've always wanted to live somewhere warm. <laughs> My body just cannot deal with the cold. Like, I get severely depressed here. But I also want to be, like, in a community where I can interact with other people in the arts. And I'm really into the fashion scene in LA. I just, like, want to get the f out of here. I'm just, like, ready to go. My boyfriend's gonna be sad, but he's coming later. Who's Coco? My dog. <laughs> I don't think I'm escaping Philly, because I could escape Philly a lot of ways, but I definitely am interested in being in, like, a very opposite environment. I worked and I came home early and I drank a 40 by myself <laughs> so I can go to sleep. My home strip club, I want to say, is uh, in East LA. There's a lot of customers, a lot of broke ones though. It's a hole in the wall, it's ghetto. There's people doing crystal, there's people doing coke, ecstasy on the table. It's, it's like a mom and pop strip club. The ones that are just like window shoppers are the worst where they literally just go and don't even order a beer and just stare at you and don't tip you at all. And then they get mad when you ask them for a lap dance because they don't got no money. This is why I want to be famous. So I can own my own strip club. How much money do you need for that? Probably like six million dollars. And then obviously our favor are the rich, the rich ones. <laughs> I dream about them every day. Hi, Poppy, come here. I think you're ready for a lap dance, you know, grab their micro penis or something. Make them feel big. What are you looking for in a potential boyfriend? <laughs> Money. Just kidding. <laughs> Someone with a bed. Like, damn, like, y'all really don't have frames. Y'all just have, like, a piece of toast, bread-looking mattress on the floor. And the dick smells like Swamp dick, like they don't know what the f a shower is. Those are the guys that are attracted to me. <laughs> I wonder what Beyonce is doing right now. LA is like creepy beautiful. I mean, not all of it, but most of it. I mean, I want to build my brand here. I'm nervous because in Philly, people are really real. Like, they say what they think, and they call you out on your bullshit. But from what I know of LA, people won't. I think the brand will definitely grow. I'm just worried about making friends, like real friends.
One of the reasons that I moved to LA is to connect with a lot of the girls that I see on the internet. So right now I'm going to meet up with Remy, who is an internet girl that I know of. She's been on my radar for a little while, so I can't wait to meet her. I've been following you on Instagram. It's like totally <laughs> cool to meet you in real life. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Yeah, of course. <laughs> You're like really good at dancing. I like basically hand make lingerie. I think I licked her page a little bit. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to shoot you sometime. I'm so down. I made my bra. I love it so much. Yeah, yeah I'm thanks. down. It's like stuff like that. <laughs> so tell me like more about LA. I just moved here. Honestly, in LA, it's either like your sucking dick for money <laughs> <laughs> or your sucking dick for money. <laughs> Even if not like literally, like. No, I'm in it literally and like figuratively. <laughs> and figuratively. <laughs> yeah, like, like both. Yeah, well, you know, I, I dance and I'm a sugar baby. I've been a sugar baby before. Don't you just love it? It's pretty fun. How long did you do that for? Um, I did it on and off for, like, all through college, pretty much. But, I mean, ultimately, I don't think that it made me really happy having sugar daddies. What's, like, the best sugar daddy you've ever had? I was, like, 18 when I got... He was kind of like my first real sugar daddy. He was the best one ever. Aww. He gave me $500 every time. So like you would just like... I was his full-time sugar baby. Aw, that's cute. And the sex was good. <laughs> <laughs> Word. I was like 18. I just like went on Craigslist and like found a job for a call girl. It seemed really glamorous and like fun. And I was also really wild at the time. But some things were not so fun. For example, I got raped. And then afterwards, there was nothing that my pimp could do about it. There's really no legal protection for sex workers anywhere. It's really made me want to fight for the perception of sex workers and just that they're real people. Because I'm a visual artist, I wanted to create sort of like an aesthetic surrounding somebody who has been involved in the sex industry and like raise those women above humanity to like a form of divinity. And I mean, that's definitely what I'm trying to accomplish. My number one trick ended up spending money on some other bitch at the club without me. So I gotta go find a new trick, <laughs> a new sugar daddy. So I'm gonna have to interview some and see how much money they got and what's their credit score like. <gasps> Food. Oh, that sounds oh. fun. Is anybody having a barbecue that we know? We can just go there. I'm one of those girls that I can't, I don't keep a sugar daddy that often. I change it like underwear, because they bore me. My ideal sugar daddy in my fantasy would be kind of muscular, but not too muscular. Yeah, like I don't want him to be ugly. I've mostly just gotten a lot of money out of them. I don't really ask for material things, because I'd rather just get the money to buy myself what I want. How much do they get out of it? To hang out with me. Me pretending to be that I'm your girlfriend or something. But you know I'm gonna get like a Shrek looking. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you do know you gotta suck it up and like give them the sugar that they want. But lately I've been getting the ones that I don't have to do anything. Like they just want companionship. So I'm getting, <laughs> I'm happy that I don't have to do that anymore. I'm telling you, we need to go to like Beverly Hills and like. We do, we'll go, we'll sit down and just be the bait and then reel them in. Like a Venus fly trap. This yeah. is so cute. I'm producing content for like Oz Colt's Instagram. Hi. 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 Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's going to be my first photo shoot here in LA. But I like never have a vision for things. I just kind of like do what feels right. But in our world today, there's a really violent, like, masculine culture. 
I think it comes from like the way that like young boys are raised <laughs> and how those boys are raised to not feel like they can be emotional or girly. And then in turn, they kind of put that mentality onto women as well. Like, it's not cool to be a pussy, you know? But like, sometimes it's important to be soft and see things from that perspective. I've never seen this type of little... It's like this yeah. weird, like, Oops, scribble, scrabble lace. That's what I chose again. Yeah. It's not, like, conventional Right, lace. exactly. Part of my goal as an artist is to get in touch with that softer side and, like, access that in people, male or female, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I just got a brand new car. You did? Yeah. My car broke down, but my sugar daddy managed to like purchase me like another one. <laughs> Literally within the hour of calling him. Very nice. Become a stripper. <laughs> <laughs> How is this tied right now? <laughs> it's like falling off. Oh. Alright, you should come to my party. Where's yeah. India? Um, it's just gonna be at my studio at Think Tank. It's like literally like around the corner from here. LA is a weird place. It's just full of people chasing their dreams. So everyone's here to try to get something. And most of the time it's not friends. Like sometimes you actually end up being like really close with them, but it's really rare. Maybe I'm just shy. Like I'm always like weird afterwards. This is where Maddie was being awkward. <laughs> the whole, the whole role. And then this is when. No, it's not better yet. Maddie was told to arch her back. I've been going through a lot of periods of like being extremely depressed, but then I just have to like constantly remind myself of like where I am and like I'm meeting all the people that I wanted to meet and I'm doing all the things that I wanted to do. So sometimes I just need to get out of my head and just like. Yeah, look around. Would you ever go back to sex work? Maybe. If I've learned anything at all, it's that you can't go backwards, or should I say, you shouldn't. And stick to your guns, because building a brand takes sacrifice. Keep your eye on the prize so one day you can drive around these streets Look up past the palm trees and lights to the hills and think, I did it. I did what I came out here to do. That feeling alone is worth it. Hi. Hi. I miss you. I miss you. How's it going over there? It's OK. I'm like trying to throw this party. And I'm just trying to like have as many people come as possible because like I'm just trying to like get my brand out here. I literally came to LA to meet all these cute girls that I follow on Instagram, the sunlight, the flowers. I want to be like a successful designer. I don't want to work for anyone else. It'd be great to have money, but I don't really want to be famous though. I want to be famous. I want to be tabloid famous. I want to have drug scandals. I want to be seen jumping over the Burger King counter saying, do you know who I am? Ashley Simpson style. <laughs> I have seen some girls like come to LA and like think they're going to make it, but they just are so overwhelmed with like, I guess, the, to put in work. If I'm doing the LA thing like fully and like reaching my potential here, then like I'm sure I'm going to love it here but I don't feel like I'm there yet. It takes like years and years. Like I'm still like 10 years deep in trying to be famous. May just needs to like let go of whatever she's holding back and just use what LA is giving her. There are some days where I'm like, I don't wanna go home. Like I hate it here. Like what am I doing? Why did I come here? Like I had everything, but yeah, that's actually a lot of days. <laughs> Tonight's the night of my landing party. I'm really nervous. I hope people come because, like, if they don't, I'm, like, worried about money. I'm pretty much just going to invite as many people as possible, like, who's ever down to come. 
The party is starting really soon. It, like In like 20 minutes, my set designer still isn't here and she still needs to hang up like the lingerie, which is like kind of the point of the party. What if not shows up? Then I'm just gonna give up on life and then give up my brand and throw it all to the wind. I use like the LA party scene to my advantage is just like exposure to the underground. Like you make a name for yourself and you can be kind of like, you know, known for that. I would just get drunk and they just started knowing me as a, as a party drunk girl who takes ecstasy pills and gets up. <laughs> and then I moved on to cocaine. Me and this other stripper were just buying eight balls and we weren't even working at the point. We we're just working for the next eight ball. Hey, got me a job with an artist for like a good two years. I only go to certain things if I if it's gonna benefit me. I just go out if like there's someone there that is like important to like connect with, then I would go. Rarely do I just go to like just have a good time. But in Hollywood, you pay with your looks. Let me see her Instagram. It's like become a big tool for a lot of these girls. I didn't think social media was like as important as it is, but it actually is like one of the most important tools in Hollywood. You're looking at your Instagram, like there's a constant like comparison and like a battle, like having to live this way day to day. Like this isn't organic. This didn't exist before. So the people that get really wrapped up in this, like I would understand why they would be like so depressed and why it would rule so much of their thoughts and their lives and their reasonings. That's like such a shitty way to live. It's all kind of like a mirage, the balance between social media and real life. Are you happy right now? I'm not really happy right now. I just want to be comfortable, but I feel like I'm really scraping by. I still want to be able to have my work have a positive and genuine impact to the people that purchase it and feel financially stable, but I don't right now. I think my mom is proud of me. I think that she wishes that I was a little bit more clean cut. <laughs> definitely come a long way, but I want to feel like I'm not stressed about my rent next month, and I want to be making enough money to feel comfortable. <laughs> and if I'm miserable by the end of it, I'm leaving. I'm going back to Philly. So tell me how it went. Like a lot of people came, but like I thought it would yeah. translate into sales, but it really didn't. So I didn't really make that much money at all. Gotta get you some press, girl. Get any sort of publicity, good, bad. I prefer like the scandalous, you know, <laughs> DUI charges, cocaine charges. Oh my god. <laughs> What's wrong, ma'am? You want? Do you want? Do you want snacks? Yeah. Here. How old is your child? He just turned six. He's autistic, but it's the best thing that could happen to me. He can tell you 12 different types of sharks and whales and what their functions are and how they eat and where they live. And he's smart, so that's good. I'm not, so. <laughs> so tell me about your new sugar daddy. Oh my God, okay. So, <laughs> so I was working as a waitress, right? And he is friends with one of my homies. Okay. So he came in. He looked at me like I was a snack, like I was like a five-course <laughs> meal. I was like, hello. My friend that knows him yeah. was like, you need to f with him, like he's rich, he got money. He'll make sure your pay your, like your bills are paid and like you're good. Yeah. And I was like, ah! 
Finally! <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how that works out. Aww. Yeah, cool. Do you want me to ask if he has like friends or something? You know? Oh. Um. But you need one. Like <laughs> during the slow times of like summer, you need a you need a sugar daddy. I know, but I'm like good right now. Okay, that's good. But yeah, you know, whenever that runs low. I know. I, I I'll always help you. see like when I'm around you, like I get all excited. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Woo! And then when I get by myself, I'm like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't do that. <laughs> I find it sad that this whole sugar baby lifestyle is being glamorized all over online. It's almost like girls think it's a guarantee to success and happiness. Yes, it's an option, but one that can knock you off course if it goes wrong. May seems like a sweet girl who's doing anything to survive. I hope she finds the right influences and sees that every overnight success is years in the making. With the right people around you, anything is possible. Do the hard work. I believe in you, May.